So here we are as Christians, and it's time to recognize if you don't take captive your thoughts and your imaginations, they're going to take you. I have a dog. I have a dog. Yeah, but your dog isn't a real dog. I'm sorry. His dog is the size of my dog's head. One bike. So I got this dog, and we were going to breed him. So we never got him fixed. This causes problems. More if you're a female than if you're a guy. We have relatives that have visited that have been attacked from behind. (laughs) Did not get free. He has a very strong personality. And he really believes that his house, excuse me, my house, (laughs) is his house. And he honestly believes that he is alpha. So when I start watching him stalking the girls in the house, no, you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. He stalks them. He'll follow them. Little little Heather Shemmerhorn, she comes into our house. She has to jump on my son's back to get around the house without getting attacked. Someone said, just get him fixed. My doctor said it's too late. It's already in his head. So here we are, right? I have to take that dog down at least once a month. Now, let me explain what that means. Because if you're thinking I'm just, you be a good boy. (laughs) He don't listen. You be a good boy. I'll give you snack if you be a good boy. I'm the big guy here. No, no. You got to roll the dog on its back. The growls that come out of his inner throat... the look in his eyes, the bearing of his teeth. And you've got to make a decision. I'm not afraid. (laughs) But I had to make that decision that I am not afraid of this dog. He is a dog and I am the master or else he will rule my house. So when I roll him over and he starts I sit on his chest and I watch that dog whisper every once in a while. (laughs) What that is, in, in the pack world, that means it's like fangs hitting the throat. You know, I'm not really hitting him, just... And all of a sudden, he'll just lay there, and his tail will go flat, boosh, and he'll lay there with this little... J- I win. Now, that doesn't happen just once. That happens on a consistent basis because he's constantly trying to take over. The Bible declares that we've got to bring our mind into captivity. That means that your mind is going to constantly try to get ahead of the Spirit of God. For the flesh wars against the Spirit. And the Bible declares that not once, but constantly, you're going to have to bring your mind into subjection and not allow it to rule your life. If you don't make that decision, then you might win one month. 
But, baby, you got to make a decision that your relationship with God, greater is he that's in you, baby, than he that's in the world. It don't matter what's between your ears. It matters who's in the heavenlies. It matters who lives in your spirit. And it's time to make a declaration that I am God's 100%. And I'm going to serve him 100%, not just in my spirit, but also in my flesh. And I am going to have complete victory in the name of Jesus. See, this is how depression works. You have a hard sit. I know. I only have five minutes. I know. It's just not going to happen. We'll blame it on the youth summit. So what happens is, you know, something real happens in your life. And it's harsh. What's everybody doing? Well, you should see it from my end. I'm looking at you and you're not. You're looking over here. Or over here. You're all crisscrossed. I'm going, what's happening? So all of a sudden, something serious happens in your life. And this is real, because I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how little money you make. This is real. (sighs) Trauma happens. And so you sit there. And your mind starts getting nasty. See, no one cares about you. Honestly, man, if they cared, they'd call. No one really, no one could care less, even if you come back to work. In fact, everybody there hates you. Do you know what? Everybody at church hates you. Do you know that meet and greet thing? How many people said hello to you? One. (laughs) See, one person in the whole church. The pastor didn't even shake my hand. He walked right by me. I tried to catch his eye. You know, no one cares. I bet God don't even care. Why do I go to church? To serve a God who doesn't even care? I prayed, man. He didn't even hear me. I know he didn't hear me because nothing happened. This church is just junk. And I've watched people literally talk, their minds have talked them out of serving Jesus. I've watched people's minds talk them out of marriage when they were already married. I've watched minds talk people into suicide, which we're going to be dealing with next week. I've watched minds literally steal people's jobs steal people's ministries, steal people's lives. And I'm here to tell you, you've got to make a decision. There's only one Alpha, and his name is Jesus. He's running your life, for I am not my own. I've been bought with a price. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about a little nice little Christianette thing that I do on a Sunday morning. I'm talking about living for Christ. And when I'm living for Jesus, I'm going to have the word guide me. I'm going to have the spirit of God. For these are the children of God that are led by the spirit of God. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of the soul and spirit and the bone and marrow is a discerner of every thoughts and the intent of my heart. I'm going to allow the word and the spirit to rule me, not me. Now, does this mean the birds aren't going to fly around your head? Of course they're going to fly around your head. But are you going to let them nest in your hair? That's your decision. And every one of us come to that. Listen now, I'll just be straight. If everybody that got saved in this church was in this church, we'd already built another church. I've watched people walk away from God on a constant basis. Well, you know, that church stuff don't work for me. I think the church stuff don't work for you. Was God a screw up? What it means is you've allowed other things in your mind to captivate you more than the word. And it's time to be a word person and not a church person. It's time to be a word person and not a religion person. It's time to allow the word of God to rule and control your life. So when it hits, you have a choice. And this is where we're going. I'm almost done. All right, I lied. (sighs) 
You don't mind me being honest, do you? Sometimes we run into some real serious scenarios at the church. I'm talking real serious stuff. I mean, literally death and life and 